Hi everyone, my name's George, this is Alex. Hello. And today we're going to aquascape this 10 litre nano cube. I can't wait to get started, it's going to be really cool. Such a great little tank. Going to use demo plants, really cool hardscape, and it just shows hopefully how easy it can be to create a beautiful small aquascape. So, first thing I'm going to do is use this lovely Syriou stone here and put that at the front of the tank. This is going to act as a barrier between the front and the rear. We're going to put some scopus soil at the rear and then some cosmetic quartz gravel from Denalay at the front. So I'm looking at the stone, what's the most interesting side? I'm thinking about making sure that is facing the viewer at the front of the tank. So we just put that in very carefully at the front. Careful not to scratch the glass. Put our second piece in. It's such a small tank. We probably don't need that big piece there. Let's go for a smaller piece. So hardscaping is really important. The hardscape process is the backbone of the layout. Everything else builds around that. So it's important we spend some care and attention, not just positioning the hardscape, but choosing it, selecting the right pieces to start with. Okay, our rocks are in position. Now we can just put our quartz gravel at the front. We don't need much at all. And then we can use a paintbrush just to flatten it. Push it towards the stones. And there's no planting in the front so it doesn't need to be nutrient rich. Just purely decoration. And the, the off-white, kind of grey-brown colour of the quartz gravel really harmonises well with the stone. And that's an important consideration when you're aquascaping. If you're using a substrate that's going to be on display, i.e. not planted, for cosmetic reasons, you do need to ensure that it matches your rocks and wood appropriately. It's actually the first time I've ever scaped a 10 litre, so quite exciting. One of the smallest tanks I've ever done. Really good way to get into aquascaping because it's not going to cost you much, it's not going to cost you much to buy the actual tank. And it's not going to cost much to plant it either. So if you're just starting getting into aquascaping, you might even have an aquarium already. But you might want to have something to play with, a bit of an experimental tank. Then this could be a good option for you. Okay, next step is to put some scaper soil. We've only got about a litre in here right now. We don't need much at all. Remember, it's only a 10 litre aquarium. Scaper soil is great. I've used it in loads of aquascapes before. It contains nutrients, helps to buffer the water, pH at about 6, 6.5. Um, it's a really good substrate for promoting root growth. It's very light in structure, very porous. Makes a good home for bacteria colonisation. Don't need to rinse it like you do some gravels. No, it's just really easy to work with. And we can deliberately slope the soil towards the rear of the aquarium and that gives us a, a better sense of depth. Also allows for, if you want to, if you want to plant any heavy root feeders, it's going to be ideal for that as well. Okay, next we're going to fit our woods, but before we do that, we've just fitted the filter. Uh, this kit comes supplied with the uh, Nano Ek filter, and we've just fitted that right now, so we make sure there's enough room to fit our wood. So I'll just bear that in mind. Now this wood already sinks, so that's perfect. We don't need to worry about it floating. Lo lovely, this is called azalea root. And I'm positioning it so the little branches pop over the top of the stones. And that just looks really natural. It's a lovely fine textured wood which is perfect for nano aquariums. In nano aquariums it's, it's really important to retain a sense of scale so you want to use small textures, fine textures and that really helps the aquarium look more detailed and more attractive. You, can, you should take your time with the hardscaping, 
like I said earlier, it's a really important part of the aquascaping process. It's the backbone of the aquascape and it helps to create a really strong layout if you have a strong hardscape. So next I'm going to talk about the Denolate in vitro plants. These are really cool. They're produced in laboratory conditions, which means they're going to be absolutely free from any algae, any snails, pest snails, and, and free from pesticides as well. Uh, they represent really good value for money. You tend to get a lot more quantity for your money when you compare it to a regular potted plant. So although they look really small, and they are really small to start with, there's a higher concentration in numbers, and they do grow very, very quickly if you treat them with, uh, with good care, give them good liquid, liquid fertilizers, a good substrate and they will grow very, very well for you. Okay, so now Alex is going to prepare the plant. So simply take the lid off. It's stuck because it has to be like that. And then remove the Eleocharis from its pot. This is Eleocharis bacilla, a really lovely dwarf hair grass, stays really short, low maintenance quite slow growing. And then we rinse it in a, a jug of, or a bucket, if you like, of uh, warm water, massage the agar jelly off of the roots. Agar jelly is the food source for the plants when it's in the laboratory. And it's really important to remove that, otherwise it can uh, cause algae because it's so rich in nutrients. So Alex now is just separating the, the plants up into about one or two centimetre portions. We could probably get between 10 and 15 portions out of one pot. And depending on your budget, you can, you can split the portions up really, really small if you wanted to, to get the, the best coverage possible. So before we plant, we need to wet the soil. And we just use a sprayer here. We don't need to completely soak the whole aquarium. We can just literally moisten the soil. And by wetting the hardscape, it also gives us an indication of how it's going to look once it's completely submersed. Okay, so now we're ready to plant the Eleocharis. So we simply grab our portion of Eleocharis in our pincettes and then we push it gently into the soil. Because we've wet the soil, it makes it much easier to plant. And we just repeat that process. And because the Eleocharis is a very short plant, we plant that right at the front making it a foreground plant. Eventually it should form a solid carpet so the Eleocharis will send out runners under the soil and then new leaf blades will protrude and eventually you'll have a solid carpet. Okay we've pre-prepared some Cryptocoryne Wendetii Compact uh, one of the Wendetii family, but it stays much shorter and if you plant it quite close together it tends to stay much more compact, so ideal for a nano tank. Okay, so exactly the same as planting the Eleocharis, grab it in our pincettes and then gently push it into the soil. So you can see why pincettes are absolutely essential when planting in such a small aquarium with small plants. And the plant does look a little bit sorry for itself right now it's because it's been growing in its pot and it's a little bit deformed, the leaves are curled over each other. But in a couple of days, the plants will settle, the, the leaves will grow towards the light and straighten out and they'll look lovely. Tissue culture plants do need liquid fertiliser right from day one, they are a baby plant. So just like human babies, they need feeding frequently. So next we're going to plant our Micranthum and Monte Carlo. This is a really popular carpeting plant, quite undemanding when you compare it to something like Hemianthus cuba. Uh, doesn't need as much light. Uh, slightly bigger leaf shape but grows in quite a similar manner and a very very popular carpeting plant at the moment. So we have our portions of Monte Carlo. One pot has given us around about 12 portions and we plant it exactly the same way as the other plants and just like the Eleocharis this should form a nice carpet. I'm deliberately mixing the Monte Carlo with the other species. I like to deliberately blend the species together sometimes to help create a more complex texture it just makes it look a little bit more natural. We are creating a nature aquarium style aquascape today. It's my favourite style of aquascaping. 
I just find it really relaxing. Okay, next we're going to plant a beautiful tiny little Anubius called Anubius pangolino. This was discovered by an uh, Italian chap called Massimo and we believe it is a mutation of Anubius bonsai. Uh, very popular, it used to be produced as a pot um, but they've now started producing it as in vitro. So beautiful, the tiny Anubius. And we attach that to the wood. Anubius does like to be attached to wood or rocks. It doesn't like to have its rhizome buried in the soil. So where the branches are crossing over, I'm just inserting the Anubius and that's enough for it to retain its position. And then over the weeks and months, the Anubius will uh, actually attach itself. The roots will anchor to the wood and be nice and secure. Okay, next step is to add our moss. So we've got some Vesicularia uh, montagainae. Uh, this is otherwise known as Christmas moss. So we prepare the moss the same way as the other in vitro plants. Remove it from the pot. And then you have this big lump of jelly which we need to take off. Just massage it. and then separate the moss lump into several portions. So we have seven portions there, eight portions, and then simply glue those using super glue onto the branches. So put a little dab of glue on, just a tiny bit, because it does dry it in a white color, which looks distracting. So we need to use the, the smallest amount possible. And there you can see moss is nice and secure. And we just repeat that process, putting the moss quite evenly distributed around the wood and eventually the moss will creep over and spread on the wood, help create a really nice natural appearance. And moss is another great plant to use to help to make the aquascape look mature straight away. So super glue is actually quite a new thing in aquascaping, been popular for a couple of years now. Um, used to have to use string or fishing line, but personally I much prefer to use glue, it's much easier, much quicker. Okay, we've almost finished with planting, but I figured we needed some height, extra height with the plants to the background of the aquascape. So I've got a new plant from Denelay here. This is called Eleocaris zingu. Uh, it's a beautiful kind of tall, Heliocaris, so it will really nicely fill up the background and it's a regular potted plant so we we'll prepare it like any other, take it out of its pot, remove the rock wool and then you can separate the plants into their individual portions like so, really simple. So to plant the background plants, the Eleocara Singu, exactly the same as before, grab them in our pincettes, push them into the soil, and you can see it's creating a lovely background effect already. Okay, we're fully planted now, so it's a case of filling up the water very slowly, uh, fitting our equipment. Okay, that's the aquascape complete. All that we need to do now is fit the filter, which I'll do later on. That's going to fit over here, and I've deliberately left uh, an open space here so it's not going to interfere with any of the plants. And I think it looks great. It shows you guys hopefully how easy it is to set up a small nano cube. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, hit that like button, do subscribe, and keep on scaping. Cheers.